Well, hello, and welcome to the video. This one is me trying to explain the whole the pub rock in less than five minutes. So let's not hang around, let's get on with it. This is my take on it, by the way. The history books and all the rest of it and Wikipedia have a slightly different take, but I was there and I'm going to stand by what I say. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Yeah! There always was music in pubs in London. In the 1950s and 60s, you had Manor House in North London. You had the Clissold Arms, where the Kinks famously played. You had the Star Croydon, where Jimi Hendrix, Georgie Fame, people like that played. You had the Fishmuggers Arms, the Ruskin Arms in East Ham, where the Small Faces first played. Imagine the Toby Jug at Tolworth, the Castle at Tootin, the Target at North Old you had loads of places. Some of them weren't called pubs, but there were big rooms in pubs. And then what happened was in May 1971, this is according to the history book, Eggs Over Easy persuaded the landlord of the Tally Ho pub in Kentish Town to let them play. Previous to that, it always been jazz. Mmm, nice. Blah, blah, blah. They weren't jazz. They were like country rock. Shite. Greenfield Swart followed. But that's all very true, but that doesn't explain all the other stuff that happened. Dave Robinson was instrumental in all the pub rock things starting up. He was involved in a thing called Fame Pushers, and he was also the manager of Brinsley Schwartz. They basically went to Irish venues and got them to open up their rooms to rock bands. There were two reasons why pub rock took off, I think. One is there were lots of venues opened up. There were lots of places you don't hear about now, like, for example, I was thinking about the Elgin in Ladbroke Grove, and there was the Howard Road one. What's that called, the Howard Road one? Well, I haven't got time to think about that because I've only got less than five minutes to do the whole thing. So, so anyway, there were lots of venues. That's one reason why it took off. And another reason is there were lots of bands. So you had venues, you had bands, but most of all, you had people who wanted to go watch it. Everyone was fed up with all the stadium rock, the pomp rock, the bands were getting more and more intricate, they had lighting designers, things like that, and pub rock was back to the basic. Now let's break another myth, shall we? Pub rock was not a style of music, it wasn't like country rock as played by Prince Schwartz or Eggs Over Easy. <laughs> was the fact that bands were playing in pubs. It's the only way to explain it because there were so many different types of music, as I've said in other videos. And by the way, if you like this, please like, subscribe, press the notification bell and comment, let me know what you think. But there were all different types of bands. There was like reggae bands, there were folk bands, there were Irish bands, there were Welsh bands, there was heavy rock, there was everything you can possibly think of and it wasn't like a style of music, it was all these bands playing in pubs. Dr Feelgood came down from Candy Island. Back in the night. Eddie and the Hot Rod, same thing. Tell me things I shouldn't be. And it sort of exploded and the first wave of pub rock was in the 1970s and the second wave was in the 1980s which I think was the more productive one because that involved indie stuff, a lot of bands come over from Australia, like Scientists and Nick Cave and all that sort of stuff and it was ginormously good. Now I was at various venues, most famously at the Cricketers at Kennington Oval and so if you want to know more about all this watch my other videos as I say like, subscribe, comment and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Whew.